Hi, my name's Polly. I'm an artist and I'm doing this video workshop to celebrate Ulster Scots Week. I'm actually Scottish. I might not sound like it, but I came over here many, many years ago, just after I left school. I was quite young when I came over and the accent sounded very different to me. So I think I just wanted to learn the lingo, be understood and understand those around me, which is why I don't sound so Scottish now. Like myself, many, many years ago, a lot of Scottish people moved over to Ulster and when they came, they brought with them their culture, their traditions and their language. Unlike me, they didn't lose those things because initially they kept within their quite tight communities that they'd come over from Scotland. Gradually over time, they began to mix with the locals, which is now where we have Ulster Scots and the Ulster Scots language. So we're going to be looking at a few different words today and doing some creative activities around those words. I've picked some nice words today. Um, we have hedgehog, hurchin, frog, puddock, toadstool, puddock stool, centipede, meg money feet, large, muckle, eyes, in, ears, lugs, nose, Neb, throat, thrapple, learning, learning, beetle, clock. So I have started with this little thing here because it's really simple and easy to do and hopefully you'll have these bits and pieces around the house. I'm kind of aware that some people will be watching this from home, maybe some people will be watching from school and you may or may not have some of the materials we're talking about. So. First thing, hopefully you should have these bits and pieces. I have some watercolour paints, um, any kind of water based paint, poster paints is going to do. I have water and a brush and I have a piece of paper which I've been drawing on with a white wax crayon. crayon. I've been pressing pretty hard and I'm just about finished and you can see absolutely nothing but I have written next to my face some of the words associated with the face. So now what I'm going to do is mix up some very watery paint. This is a great one for younger children because it's almost like magic when this sort of appears and it's the sort of thing that you can prepare before for them and you can maybe then use afterwards to show them the words rather than having the written words. But when you start to paint the face becomes apparent and our lovely Ulster Scots words for the different parts of the face. And there we have our lugs and of course being water based paint it shrinks away from the waxed areas and there we have it. So that is our first very simple piece that we've done here with some of our Ulster Scots words in it. So the next little project um, that we're looking at involves a piece of foam, uh, just a thin flexible piece of foam. Um, my one happens to be patterned, that's not going to make any difference to what we get um, at the end. Uh, you can also try this with maybe a piece of polystyrene, it could be something that comes out of uh, packaging, as long as it's sturdy enough that when you make an indentation in it, um, it will keep the line. I've got one here that I've already um, prepared and if I were to run my finger over that I can feel the groove. So it's something that you can press a line into but that you're not going to pierce all the way through. Now I'm using a pen here to get started simply because then you'll see the lines. The pen will probably stop producing ink after a little while. That's fine. It'll work again afterwards. It's just it's not particularly fond of the foam. Um, if you're working with this one with kids maybe something like a pencil or any other sort of blunt tool that you have uh, that isn't going to go all the way through. So what I'm focusing on right now is I'm drawing little puddock stools and I'm pressing in reasonably firmly. I don't want to pierce through the foam but I do want to leave quite a nice indentation and you just keep going until you're happy with that. So obviously I have my Blue Peter moment here. I have one I prepared earlier. Um, I've been doing a little printing with this one already. 
So I have my poster paints. Um, again, any kind of liquid paint that's reasonably sort of thick and gloopy. Um, you don't want it too thin and runny. Um, so these are ready mix paints. Um, I have my three different little sponges for my three different colours. These are just cut up from a piece of waste sponge. You could use um, your kitchen sponge, anything like that. Um, what we're aiming to do here is just to get a bit of colour onto our areas. So I'm going to dab the sponge in, but what I'm going to do is wipe the sponge off on the edge so that there's not too thick paint going on because if we put the paint on too thickly what happens is is that those little grooves that we've worked so hard on making become filled with paint and then they're not so clear on the actual finished thing. Now I'm being quite rough with this. I'm putting red paint generally in the area of my to toadstool. Obviously depending on what type of sponge or what way you use it you can get more careful edges and if you're working uh, and you want to be very very particular about things then you can actually tidy little bits up with a paintbrush but we're just doing a very quick and simple easy sort of way of going here because we want this to be accessible for very very young children right the way through obviously can be adapted to work with older kids who have a bit more sort of um, interest in maybe care of how things look. So I'm just going to finish that off and come back to you when I'm ready to print. So I'm just about finished with this. Um, just a little tip, if you do think you've put on a little bit too much paint then you can just sort of wipe at it, dab at it like that and take off some of that excess. Um, and of course you don't have to print in, the, in several colours. One colour is uh, plenty. Sometimes actually they're more effective done like that. So now I'm going to take a piece of paper and all I'm going to do is to drop that piece of paper down on top of the plate. Okay. And then just smooth over. Now you can use something like a spoon to rub the back of this so that you get a really nice print going into all those lovely indentations that you've created. And I think the beauty of this is you get a different, slightly different print every time because you never put the um, paint on quite the same way. So lift that off and there we go. We have a paddock sitting by a paddock stool.